Now we'd like to understand what force actually does when force is not zero. First, we'll look at what the influence of mass on acceleration is. Imagine that we have different objects with different masses. How does the mass of the object affect how easy it is to accelerate? Is it easier or harder to accelerate with greater mass? Acting along the same lines, what's the influence of force? So now we can imagine a single object. We apply different forces to this single object. How does the force affect the acceleration? Does a greater force give more acceleration or does a greater force give less acceleration? Now I'd like to ask you what you think force does in the first place. Does the net force on an object determine its final speed, its acceleration, its inertia, or something else? Here's Newton's answer, and it probably gives you conceptually the answer that you expect. Greater force gives greater acceleration, greater mass gives smaller acceleration. Newton's second law expresses this in the simplest way possible, that the acceleration is given by the force divided by the mass. Often you'll see this written as the force equals mass times acceleration. That's a way that's written without a fraction bar. I like it the way that I wrote it initially, that acceleration is force divided by mass, because that shows more clearly cause and effect. Acceleration is caused by force and affected by mass. Force is not caused by mass and acceleration. The F, the force in this equation, is the net force. Well, this equation gives us an opportunity to quantify force, or more specifically, to define it. Force is, what is the F in that equation? We can now define force in terms of mass and acceleration. The SI unit for force is known as the Newton, named after Isaac Newton. And it's the force required to accelerate a mass of one kilogram at an acceleration of one meter per second per second. You might notice that the unit itself was written lowercase. That was not a mistake. Units named after people are written out with lowercase because it's not a proper name. However, the symbol is always written with a capital letter. So the symbol for the Newton is the capital letter N, though if you're writing out the word Newton, that's without a capitalization. But it's a perfectly universal convention, used always whenever there's an SI unit named for a person. Now let's use what we've just learned. Given that force equals mass times acceleration, or acceleration equals force divided by mass, imagine that we have some object with a mass of 10 kilograms, and it's accelerating at a rate of one meter per second per second, what must be the force acting on it? I hope you got that the answer has to be 10 newtons. Though actually, if you do the multiplication, you will get 10 kilograms times one meter per second squared, or 10 kilogram meters per second squared. Is that the same thing as saying 10 newtons? We never said. Let's check it out. The newton itself is defined from this Newton's second law acceleration is force divided by mass. A force unit has to be mass units times acceleration units. Therefore, since mass units are kilograms, and since acceleration units are meters per second per second, then a newton must be a kilogram meter per second per second, or, in short, a kilogram meter per second squared. The newton is the unit of force, and that's composed of units for mass, distance, and time. So here's a calculation problem for you. We have a net force of 100 newtons acting on a 10 kilogram steel block. What is the acceleration of the block? So here we're not given the acceleration, we're given the force and the mass and told to find the acceleration. How do we approach that? See if you can figure that out for yourself before going on. All right, this we can use Newton's second law in the way that I like it, acceleration equals force divided by mass. We have everything we need. We have the force, we have the mass. The force is 100 newtons, the mass is 10 kilograms. So 100 newtons divided by 10 kilograms. The numbers we can do, 100 divided by 10, and the units, we have newtons per kilogram. So 100 divided by 10, that's easy, that's 10. To evaluate newtons per kilogram, we have to expand what a newton is. So remember, a newton is a kilogram meter per second per second, or a kilogram meter per squared second. So then we divide that quantity by a kilogram. I hope you can read the way I've done that. So kilogram meters per second squared, that whole quantity divided by kilograms. We have kilograms in the numerator 
and kilograms in the denominator, so those will cancel right out, and then you have 10 meters per second squared, which is acceleration units. So a newton per kilogram is just a different way of writing a meter per second squared. They're the same thing. How about this one? We have a goose flying south for the winter, and it's moving at a constant velocity of 2.5 meters per second south. What's the direction of the net force acting on this goose? Is it A, north, B, south, C, up, D, down, E, you don't know, or F? None of these is correct. The answer is F. None of these is correct. The net force on the goose is zero. It has no direction. Why do I say the net force on the goose is zero? Because the goose is traveling at a constant velocity. The goose is in mechanical equilibrium. The net force on the goose is zero. But you might ask, the goose has to move its muscles. It has to flap its wings to maintain this steady speed going south. Yes, it has to overcome the forces of gravity and drag on it. To overcome and exactly cancel if it's traveling at a constant velocity. If it's turning, well, then there's a net force. If it's speeding up or slowing down, then there's a net force. But if it's moving at a constant velocity, the net force is zero. Another example for you, a bowl of petunias with mass m. We're not giving you the mass. You have to do this symbolically. Accelerates downward in free fall at a rate of 9.8 meters per second per second. First, what is the direction of the net force acting on the bowl? And then second, what is the magnitude of the net force acting on this bowl of petunias? And last, what does the bowl of petunias say?